So which guitar is the absolute best? Hey everybody, Jace Allen here. Welcome back to the channel. So I've reviewed a ton of guitars on this channel. To date, I've reviewed approximately 24 electric guitars on the channel. And over the past maybe five years, I've bought and sold uh, over 30 uh, electric guitars. And uh, so which ones did I find to be the best out of all the guitars that I've either reviewed or bought and sold? So that's what this video is about today. So I got my first guitar when I was about 12 years old. It was a, an acoustic, I think it was the Harmony brand. Uh, it was a three quarter size or a parlor acoustic guitar. Uh, the action on it was terrible. The strings were stiff. Uh, it was really difficult to play, and so I didn't. I didn't play it for very long. I uh, got frustrated and kind of set it aside. And then when I was age 15, my brother, older brother moved out of the house. He had this guitar that he had gotten from a friend of his, and he gave it to me because he wasn't going to, you know, he didn't think he was ever going to play it or learn how to play it. So that was the Skylark uh, brand guitar by Matsumoku uh, that I reviewed on this channel, and I bought a PV Rage you know, a little, just a little practice amp, uh, and that's what I learned on. And then uh, when I was probably in my early 20s, I took that guitar to a pawn shop, traded it for a, what I thought was a more, you know, sophisticated guitar because it had a Floyd Rose tremolo system on it, uh, locking tuners and all that kind of stuff. I don't exactly remember what that guitar was brand-wise, but I think it was either a Kramer or a Carvin uh, guitar. It was white, it had, uh, uh, I think, a switch for a coil tap on it, and I'm pretty sure it had the Seymour Duncan pickups in it. That was a great guitar. Uh, and then I got a digital effects processor for it. It was a rack mount digital effects processor, and that thing could do pretty much any sound you wanted to. Uh, and I only had that stuff for, for a year or two, and then I ended up selling it, and you know, uh, got married, and uh, life kind of happened. So then I didn't really play guitar again. I didn't have a guitar in the house uh, until I was, I think, in my early 30s, so probably 10 years later. And then I bought a, a really cheap acoustic guitar and a cheap Telecaster style guitar off of eBay uh, and played those for, for a while, maybe a year or so, and then again set it aside. And then it was another 10 years after that, and then the bug really bit, and then that's when I started really buying and selling, trying to find uh, the right guitar that I wanted, and just kind of really getting into uh, not only guitar playing, but really just guitar, you know, buying and reviewing, and, and uh, uh, even building some guitars. So then that led me to uh, creating this channel. And so here are just a few of the guitars that I have uh, bought and sold. And some of them, I didn't review all of them. Some of them just kind of came and went and never did any reviews on them. Uh, I did the Tom DeLonge uh, Signature Stratocaster. I uh, did a Fender Contemporary uh, Stratocaster. Those are made in Japan. I uh, did a Fender USA made Bonnie Raitt Signature Stratocaster. That was made in 1996. So probably right on the edge of when CNC uh, manufacturing started. Uh, Fender Standard with the plus top, that was a really nice looking flame maple top. Uh, Les Paul Studio, I think I've had a couple of those. I had some uh, Squire uh, Affinities and Bullets. And then I had a, a Squire Affinity from 1997. And the uh, serial number on it was the NC7 series in these uh, had the full thickness body. Uh, I think they were alder, and so they were more, almost more similar to the made in Mexico fenders. And then I had a S Harmony Stratocaster uh, that the neck was badly twisted on. Um, and then some of these guitars made in Korea, but they were the house brand guitar for a local uh, music store here that has since closed. Uh, and the owner was named Rick Allen, and they were called Allen Guitars. They had a, a script A on the headstock. Uh, did a Lix Pro, and 
a couple Schecters, uh, actually a few different Schecters, Nick Johnson, uh, Strat, that was a great uh, guitar. Uh, Schecter C6, which is very similar to the Volgoa uh, guitar that I bought. A really nice court Les Paul, uh, Yamaha Pacifica, which caused quite a stir. Um, some Firefly guitars, uh, teased guitar, and then sort of the run of cheap Amazon guitars from the Gear It uh, to the Ariga, which are no longer available. And then the Squire debut, of course, and then some Washburns. And I even had a Gibson Les Paul Studio in the faded brown color, which I had traded someone for a Martin, uh, I'm not sure what, what model Martin it was, Martin Acoustic. Uh, had an LTD uh, Les Paul style guitar. That was, that was really nice. Frets on it were really tall, so when I played it, it would kind of sound out of tune. Uh, so I ended up selling that. And then a Jet uh, guitar, uh, which was really nice. And then if you kind of go to my uh, channel and some of the ones I've reviewed, uh, I did the Gear It, the two different Gear It uh, guitars. The Stratocaster was probably uh, the best of those two. Uh, the Telecaster with the semi-hollow body on it, uh, the top wood on it was really cheap. It's just a, it's uh, you know just a plywood, and they didn't put binding in the F hole. And I don't know that guitar didn't really sound all that great to me. Um, and then uh, I reviewed a couple different Donner guitars. Uh, the DST 400, which is an alder body with the semi-transparent finish on it, those guitars were really nice. Um, I think that one actually had an ebony fretboard on it. Uh, those you can't really, I don't think uh, Donner sells, I think they moved on to another, another model. Uh, a couple Squires, uh, the Fender, or, or the Fender. The Fireflies, I did the Firefly double cut, which was, it was okay. The, the pickups on it weren't, I mean, they sounded okay, but they were P90s, so I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Um, the cheaper Donners, the DST100 series, those are pretty good. Uh, I'd put those right up with the Harley Bentons. Uh, and then the Firefly FF338s, those are pretty good. Um, I actually had a Schecter uh, semi-hollow uh, body guitar, but that guitar I think was quite a bit better uh, than the Firefly guitars. And then I had a uh, S101 brand uh, guitar. These are made in China. I don't know if they're still being made. I think maybe they were made early 2000s, maybe late late 90s. Uh, and I did a review on a Les Paul style guitar. I wish I kept that one. That one's actually a really good guitar. And let's see what else. Oh, and then the Skylark uh, guitar, I did a review on that. Uh, Tease, and then, the, and then I did the uh, Made in Mexico Fenders. So I had a couple of those. I had the Plus Top Fender, and then the one that I just bought and sold here recently, which was the Fender like limited edition or something. It had the surf green or the pearl surf green uh, finish on it and that was a pretty nice guitar as well and then finally uh, I've got the um, Epiphone SG standard and then a guitar that I haven't reviewed yet is just sitting in the box here somewhere that I traded some audio gear for and that's a Zach Wild guitar that's made by uh, Schecter and so uh, kind of gave it some thought and kind of wanted to sort of go over um, sort of what I thought, sort of put the guitars into sort of a ranking, just a, just a quick, you know, not really a, a, a bulleted list, but just to talk about some of the guitars that I've reviewed and where I would kind of place them in, in order. So of all the guitars that I've reviewed in the past, um, not quite a year, but I think starting in November is when I got the the Firefly Strat style guitar. And then I bought a series of guitars after that. Um, and then I sold a bunch of them. So the, out of all the guitars that I had that I've reviewed recently, I've kept uh, four of them, of, of electric guitars. 
And so one of them is the SG, uh, Epiphone SG, and that's a really great guitar, and I did a review on that. Uh, the other one is the Firefly FFST, which is the Stratocaster style uh, model. And then the uh, cheaper Amazon, it's a brand called Ariga, which I don't know if they've been discontinued. Uh, you go to their website, um, you can't, everything's sold out. So I don't know what the deal is with that brand, but it was a really good guitar. Uh, so I kept that. And then the Volgoa, which is another decent guitar. And I will explain real quick why I chose to keep those. So the, the Volgoa, this is a solid mahogany body, which is nice, and then a roasted maple neck. So it's, it, it's a really good looking guitar. It's got an actual flame maple uh, cap, you know, top on it. And it had locking tuners and it had the uh, um, abalone in, you know, inlays for the fret dots. Uh, I think this was a 24 fret also. And it has the regular, it's sort of strat style, it has a regular tremolo on it and everything, but it's a double humbucker. And I, did I mention that it has locking tuners? And so the one thing that I really liked about this guitar was that it's got, uh, I think it's a 12 or a 14 inch radius uh, fretboard, which I think is a lot more comfortable to play than the nine and a half inch. And the fact that it was uh, mahogany and not like basswood or, or whatever. Uh, and it sounds really good. It's got dual humbuckers in it, uh, just a three-way switch, and then a single tone, single volume, which is kind of nice too because it just kind of makes it simple. So I kept that guitar, and that guitar I actually took to work so that I have a guitar at work so I can, I can play on my break. So then the only thing that I sort of don't like about this guitar, and I... I I think I mentioned this with the um, Schecter C6 was that they don't have the uh, neck plate. Uh, they're just sort of grommets, almost like a washer. And so the neck screws go in uh, and there's no plate back there. And so I've noticed with guitars like that, you'll get quite a bit of flex in the neck that can, if you really kind of crank on the neck, it'll sort of bend things out of tune a little bit. But other than that, it was a really good guitar and those are currently unavailable right now too. So then the other guitar that I kept was this Ariga um, and that guitar is a full thickness body but it's and it's poplar not basswood so that was I thought that was nice too. Um, I think it's a rosewood no it's a uh, purple heart is uh, the fretboard and it's just your standard Stratocaster style guitar but one of the things that I found interesting was the headstock on it actually is a little different they've got this it almost looks like the harmonies it's got the little bird beak almost but then it's it's carved a little bit more because there's like a step in the in the headstock and it really kind of looks nice it's not just a generic headstock it actually kind of looks good and so, but a guitar like this would be suitable for modding because of the full thickness body. But I'm, I'm not going to do any mods with that. I like the, the humbucker on it. I think sounds really good. And so I just use that. I got that upstairs uh, next to the couch so I can, I can play when I want to play. So then the two sort of top <laughs> of my list for the ones that I kept are the Epiphone uh, SG standard and the firefly ffst which is the stratocaster style i think i don't know i may have gotten super lucky with that firefly because uh, when those came out this was back in november of last year 2023 and a lot of people it was like this huge drop that firefly had and there was all these stratocaster style guitars and I, it was during the Black Friday sale and they were super reasonable. I think this thing was right around maybe $160, $170. And uh, so uh, my wife got me one for, for Christmas and uh, it's, 
it's a fabulous guitar. It's just amazing. It's got a roasted maple neck on it. It's got an alder, full thickness alder body. Paint job on it's pristine. It's got stainless steel frets on it. Uh, rosewood fretboard, um, a humbucker, and two single coils. And it's an absolutely amazing guitar. But the thing is, is I've heard some people, you know, say that the quality with them is inconsistent. So. Uh, so then I did a review on the Epiphone SG, or kind of a review, but uh, that guitar is really nice. Um, uh, during band practice last week, I was playing it and realized that uh, it's, it was not, it was like out of tune. And I'm like, why is this out of tune? So then I discovered that it it's, needs to be intonated. So even, you know, an Epiphone that's, this is the inspired by Gibson, uh, you know, series, and it was, I think it was under 600, but it was, I think, right around 550 uh, for that guitar, and that guitar needed to be intonated. So just about every guitar that I've purchased, other than, like, used guitars that were already set up by the previous owner, needed to be intonated. And then the Auriga, a side note on that, the sh uh, fret ends were really super sharp on that, and then I did a video on... Uh, you know, repairing the fret ends on that uh, type of guitar. So those are the ones that I've sort of kept out of all the ones that I've, you know, reviewed the past about six months, maybe eight months. So uh, just to kind of rank the guitars that I've, uh, you know, I've reviewed and bought and sold over the years, uh, USA made Fenders are obviously really good. Uh, I would put them and Made in Mexico Fenders right next to each other because, in my opinion, there's not a lot of difference uh, between them other than where they're made. I think that's the reason that one is, you know, uh, more expensive than the other is probably just that. Uh, the, and like I said, the Firefly FFST that I got, uh, that I got really lucky on, you know, I think that's every bit as good as the the Made in Mexico and the USA Fenders that I've owned. I, I know that'll ruffle some feathers, but hey, it is what it is. I'd say the Epiphone SG is up there. Um, I had a Les Paul Studio, uh, which was really nice. I also had an LTD uh, Les Paul style uh, guitar, which is quite a bit cheaper than the, uh, than the actual Gibson Les Paul Studio. And I thought those two were pretty darn close in sound and, you know, quality. And they both had the tall frets on them, and I think that's why I ended up getting rid of those. And then the Schechter Nick Johnson Stratocaster that I had, that is some super high-quality uh, guitar building there. Schechter really makes some nice, nice guitars. Um, they're a little more expensive, but they're, they're really well done. Uh, and then the Court... Les Paul style guitar that I had. I don't know. Everybody ripped on that thing. Uh, everybody rips on court. I have no idea why. That was a great guitar. Uh, it was really well made. Heavy. I mean, you know, very well, very well built. Sounded great. Um, so I would kind of put all those guitars sort of in the same category as one another. Uh, and then the Jet brand that I had, that's kind of right. I mean, that's really close to being as good quality is the other. So then I would say then the step down from that, sort of the middle range of guitars would be the Jet, uh, sort of the Donners. I know the, the Donner DST-100s I think are a little bit more on the cheaper scale and then that DST-400 I think would push closer to uh, the, you know, the top uh, level of guitars. And then like the Rick Allen guitars that were made in Korea, uh, any of the Squires that I've uh, reviewed except the debut we'll get to that in a minute of uh, the tees uh guitars uh that Ariga guitar the volgoa the schecter c6 i think those are all kind of in the same sort of tier um i think they're really good uh they're not just an entry level guitar i think you can gig with them uh they're going to be less expensive than like a usa made or a, a gibson les paul and so you're not going to worry about them getting damaged or stolen or whatever if you're playing out. And then I would put uh, guitars, sort of the 
generic Amazon cheap guitars and and you would think that the Auriga and the Volgoa brand would fall under that but I was really impressed with those those two guitars even though the Auriga had some of the fret ends you know were pretty pretty sharp but that could be I don't know I mean I've heard of you know made in Mexico fenders showing up with the same problem so um, so I would put oh and then in the middle tier I'd also put the Pacifica the uh, Yamaha Pacifica in there with those and then at the bottom which I would consider these to be um, just like you know casual players beginners or whatever I would I would put the Lix Pro in there um, the that Nashville guitar that I reviewed that I got a lot of flack for saying it was a really great guitar because somebody said basically that it you know that it was garbage or whatever and then of course the debut which caused the big stir and the video about that and the Pacifica um, I would kind of put those down towards the bottom um, after time with the debut and playing it and 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 you know playing other guitars after that um, I have to back pedal a little bit on the debut, um, so it kind of goes back to that one video with the with the comments about <laughs> the debut being a toy. Everybody said it was. A, some people said it was a toy. Um, I mean, it doesn't sound like a toy, but it doesn't sound great either. I mean, it's not definitely not something that I would use to perform with, but it's a solid guitar to practice with. Uh, same with the, that Nashville guitar I had in the Lix Pro. I played a, a Telecaster, Lix Pro Telecaster. And then the Area Pro, I mean, those those are really good guitars. They make some great guitars, but they have some that are really on the cheaper end and then some that are kind of up with, I would say, like the Jet brand uh, of guitar. So I would say that if you're going to purchase a really inexpensive guitar off of Amazon that you know like the debut and the licks and, and things like that and sort of the cheaper donners they're gonna be a, a little you know a little less quality and maybe not quite sound as good um, and if you're on a budget and you want something that sounds really good and plays really well then I think you know obviously squires are good and, and some of these uh, sort of mid-tier uh, guitars are good. So I would probably stick with the Fireflies, the more expensive Squires, the Donner brand, things like that. You get really good guitars for the money and they're really good quality and then if you purchase them on Amazon, if you have any issues with them, then you can send them back. And then if you're, you know, if you have the money to spend, obviously, you can't go wrong with, uh, you know, Fender. Uh, I think Fender Made in Mexico is every bit as good as Fender USA and of uh, of course, Epiphone, I mean, the, the prices of these guitars are really starting to go up, so I don't really consider them necessarily cheap guitars anymore. And of course, Schecter. Schecter's a really good uh, brand as well. So I just wanted to go over those. Those are the guitars that I've reviewed so far this year. Uh, I'm going to kind of change gears a little bit and try not to uh, review the same old <laughs> Stratocaster style guitar. So upcoming soon is the this Zach Wilde uh, guitar from Schecter. I'm going to try to do a review on that real quick. And then I am buying another uh, cheap uh, Amazon Stratocaster style guitar to review simply because it's uh, less than $70. So I got to see what this thing is like. So anyway, so there you go. Just a quick video about the uh, guitars that I've reviewed and what I think are some of the best guitars. And uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.